Hello everybody, it's Anna here live with Cycling UK. It's Bance Bikes and Being Female. And for the first time in this series, we're covering a topic that is truly exclusively female. So we have covered topics before that about getting into cycling where actually a lot of the advice has been gender neutral. Anyone can pick up those bits of information, but we've really enjoyed highlighting and making visible some of the excellent expert women within the cycling world because we do want to break down those barriers and get more women into cycling and bridge that gender gap, get it 50-50. So we've got half and half. But today we're talking about advice that really is all about the women. We're going to be talking about periods. Now, guys, if you are happen to tune into this, feel free. You're welcome. It's it's a welcome and friendly space here. And maybe by tuning in, you will pick up some, some tips as well yourself so that if you're cycling with other women, you know what's going on and maybe you know a little bit more how to broach it. So it really is a conversation for everybody. Uh, if you'd like to pick up more information about cycling with periods, you can go to the Cycling UK website, www.cyclinguk.org and you can look up about uh, periods and all things on women's cycling actually. Also you are encouraged to put your questions in the chat so if you want to talk, like mention anything even if you just want to say hi right now like we've got Nadia here saying hi from Manchester, yo Julie saying hello nice to hear you uh, nice to see you there and Hannah so if you that's how it works you can just put your comments in the live chat and uh, if you've got questions as well we'll try and answer them we do have a private group so you can uh, put your comments in there and if you're feeling a little bit shy you can write those questions later on and we'll come back to them and we'll type our answers and you can also uh, check out the Valley Vixen women's page as well so it, it, there is loads of opportunity to, for you to get your questions answered but not feel self-conscious about it but I don't feel like we need to be feeling self-conscious today anyway. We've got a great group of expert women and I'm going to start introducing them right now. So uh, first up, I'm going to introduce Fran, who's been on the panel since day one. She really does know everything about cycling. I really don't think there's anything you don't know about cycling. Fran, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, Anna. I'm Fran from Bella Vixen. Um, we are an online women's cycle clothing retailer, but the point is we also aim to offer expertise and advice to everybody out there. Um, I've cycled myself for 25 years, a variety of cycling um, abilities and disciplines, um, and most of the kit I have worn and tested, whether it be I've purchased it myself pre-working for Bella Vixen or, you know, get it at work, so... Excellent. And you've got some lovely jerseys hanging up behind you as well. There's something that you sell at Belly Vixen? Yes, that's our own range. There's only two of them. There's a couple more than that. Um, we sold out super quickly, but we've got more coming back in stock at the end of June. So if you're interested, drop us an email and we'll put you on the waiting list. Mm, terrible problem to have. <laughs> um, hi, Vanessa, by the way, from Stevenage. Thanks for joining us. And we're also going to introduce now Charlene, who's also been with us from the beginning. Charlene, how are you doing? <laughs> Hi Anna, hi yes I'm Charlene Jones and I work for myself and I now am a coach uh, through Dynamic Fitness. I have my own online three hit wonder uh, program and also mobility uh, and I used to be a professional cyclist so I've got a few tips coming your way today. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, you really do know your stuff. You've been there, done it, lived it. And finally, I'm going to introduce someone who's her first time to the panel. So please do make her feel welcome. Say hello in the live comments. Adele, hi, thanks for joining us. Why don't you let everybody know who you are? Hi, thanks, Anna. Um, yeah, so my name's Adele. I've got my own company, which is a lifestyle company. Um, but I specialize in female nutrition and training. So personal training, nutrition, specifically females. I used to be a cyclist as well, um, done pretty much every single discipline from track to I know my stuff in general with cycling. <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely do. You've been on all of the bikes. Um, all, of all the bikes. <laughs> so let's just loosen up a little bit here. Some people, I don't, I don't think many of you lot, but um, I think some people could potentially be more shy than others when talking about this topic. Um, so I'd like to know what phrases you guys either use or have heard when you want to be talking about surfing that crimson wave. <laughs> That's my one. <laughs> Charlene, what, what have you got? What, what do you use? Uh, 
Oh, m- mostly just oh, it's it's coming. That must be what that is then. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. It's it's horrible. It's this this is horrible. But I've heard people say, oh, "I'm gonna God. be on my puds." Scottish thing or not? <laughs> Uh, I've heard them on the rag. Mama pads. Fran, have yeah. you heard any of them, any funny ones come up in your Velo Vixen group? No, nothing lately. But what did make me laugh is a friend messaged me recently about TOM in capital letters. And I said, oh, who's Tom? Is this a new boyfriend? They put two and two together. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the normal ones, I guess, like you mentioned, brag on the blob. The ones that just, I guess, they're the ones that have made us shy. People shy away because they just sound so unpleasant. You know, <laughs> yeah, time of the month or period or menstrual cycle is quite normal. But I think you know when you're young and people say words like blob when you're, you're a teenager, <laughs> you're embarrassed because you haven't. You know, it just yeah. It's it's not the nicest word, blob. There is it, Adele. Have you got any good ones up your sleeve? One of my uh, one of my clients calls it Blood Week, which I think is <laughs> quite <laughs> accurate. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing other than that. But like you say, sometimes almost giving it a name is making it more disgusting. On the blob is probably yeah. It's yeah, it's got to be one of the worst ones. So on the internet here, I've seen um, visits from Aunt Flo, which is quite nice, and uh, the red badge of courage. <laughs> I mean, they have all these names, don't they? You can call it what you want, but essentially, they're just part of life. You know, periods happen, and if you cycle, we need to sort of work out how to get on with it and what that means to your cycling life. And not only is there the week of your period, there's the whole monthly cycle and how that changes so much physically, what you need to be eating, where you get your energy sources from, your mood. And then there's so much that goes into this topic. Actually, I think it's quite a uh, quite a heavy topic. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, extra points here for anyone that can get puns in as well. Uh, the first topic I want to talk about is mood and confidence, because especially in women's cycling, a lot of the research that we've done here at Cycling UK is that a big barrier for women getting into cycling is confidence. Um, they might feel fearful of being the slowest in a group. They might feel fearful of cycling on the roads with traffic. And these are very real feeling fears, which are only going to be exacerbated if you're coming up to your period and you're feeling a little bit nervy. So anyone here, do you feel, what? how does your PMT affect your mood and affect your cycling mood? So we're talking before your actual period in the lead up. Go on, Adele. <laughs> so I think it's, it does differ for everybody, that's for sure. But um, certainly even the people who don't suffer at all will have at least one day where they just feel so lethargic. Um Females do actually genuinely need an extra two to 300 calories in the few days before you actually have a period, which is where the desire for chocolate comes from. Everybody's like, oh, it's coming up to that week. I need chocolate. Give me chocolate. Um, And also why it will reduce your mood. So there is actually a physical need for a little bit of extra calories um, in those few days. And I think even, you know, those who don't suffer will just be really, it's just so harder to get out isn't it it's so much harder to motivate yourself and to you know to sort of like force yourself to do the exercise and actually I think that knowing what's coming and planning your training so that you can be kinder to yourself on those days is really really important I think knowing what coming is really important because I know like for me I can get really I feel like it's the end of the world sometimes and if it really affects my confidence and I'm personally more into sort of the gravity side of mountain biking and cycling so I like to do things specifically search out things that scare me jumps and downhill things and in the couple of days before my period I will feel a lot more nervous and but my problem is I don't keep track of it I'm not like in tune enough with my body then my period comes and then I'm like oh that's what that was and for me personally I reckon if I 
and feeling very nervous about cycling and mountain biking, it'd probably be best for me just to take two days where I'm not trying to do things that scare me, wait a couple of days, and then get on with it when my mood and my confidence is telling me, yeah, I want to do this and I want to go for it. Fran, yeah, what's your contribution there? Well, my contribution to what you just said then is you said you never really track it or follow it. So the key to that is I think you need to start tracking it. There's some fantastic <laughs> apps out there. Um, the one I use is the Fitter Woman app um, because it's not just about tracking and telling you when your cycle's going to arrive. It also provides you information and feedback, and I know Adele will be able to come in with more of this, about what you should be eating at those different times. Because obviously the classic is, as Adele said, you need to up your um, calorie intake. But for example, the, our metabolism's going faster. We crave carbohydrates during those, those periods. And often we crave things for a reason. Yeah. So it's important, right. it is key for people to start tracking their cycle. That will give them a better understanding of their own body and why, you know, you wake up in the morning and think, oh, God, I feel awful. You're like, oh, that, you know, that's why now I know how to manage it. Yeah, when well, you do know why. I don't want to go too much into the diet side of things right yet because I do want to come on to sort of training and stuff later. But have any of you got any other tips about maybe extra boosts of confidence when you are, like for me, I actually think... If I'm feeling very, very nervous, I will just wait a couple of days before actually going out and tackling that that thing that's making me feel scared. Has anyone else got any topics about um, comments about mood and, and your feeling in your PMT time? Yeah, Charlene. Yeah, so I'm, before my period, I always feel quite tired, but when I train, I actually train very well. So for me, the week before, not during, but before, I actually get some of my best training in then. And even though I'm feeling lith lethargic, when I do go out, I always feel better after because I know that if my period's coming and I'm on my period, those days are going to be tough for me. And then after, I just feel weak. So I know that even though I know that my period's coming because my maybe my mood's a little bit different and... I just you you I track it so I know when it's coming. Um I I just get my session done and I know that I'll personally I'll feel better after that. So everyone's different, so it's important to um listen to your body as well. And although I do feel lethargic in those that kind of week before my period, I do make sure that I do do something. And if it is, you know, I need I need to sleep all day kind of lethargic, then I'm not gonna go out on my bike. But if I do feel like, oh, just that I can't be bothered feeling, I just do it. I just go out and do it and I feel better. Um, Cause it's the mood thing as well. Sometimes it's not like, it's just the hormones. So I would suggest maybe giving it a try unless it's a kind of lethargic, like you want to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And can I just want to bring up a comment here from Laurie who says that she gets really wobbly when she's hormonal, like physically wobbly, I have no sense of balance and start falling off my mm. bike about a week before my period arrives. So I, I say I feel wobbly in a more emotional sense um, as opposed to a physical one like that. So has anyone got some comments on, on there? Fran, yeah, you've got your hand up. Well, the physical one is um, evidence that you have reduced reaction time, that your manual dexterity is mm. a little bit. I don't know if you remember, I can't remember what year it was. Heather Watson, the British tennis player, got knocked out of Wimbledon in the first round a few years back when she was one of the best in the country. And she blamed it on her period. Um, or not bl blamed, sorry, the wrong word. She highlighted that she had her period and that's why she'd had a problem. But the press, majority male, basically slated her, saying you can't use your period as an excuse, like you're a professional. But there are studies and there is evidence out there that proves that during your period, you have a reduced reaction time. So that is very, you know, goes hand in hand with Laurie saying she feels a little bit wobbly. Mm. That That's really interesting scientific mm. background there and, you know, information. And I've got Rachel here saying, uh, sort of agreeing with me, that she feels more nervous cycling before her period, but actually finds cycling through it really lifts her mood but she'll often do an easier ride or stick to a turbo. And I think that's that's a really good point. And it's something I've got down in my notes here. It's that, yes, you can still get out for a ride often and it will boost your mood. And it's about maybe finding that balance between your nerves and how wobbly you're feeling, whatever you want to take that word to mean, um, but actually getting out and having a mood lift. 
Uh, so would you guys sort of encourage getting out and giving it a go, but maybe reining it back a little or tr would you try and push on through? Yeah, Adele? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, as Charlene said, it is different for everybody. And I think if you read on it a bit, you'll see that most of the information says that you'll be lethargic a few days before, but then from day one of your period, you're suddenly filled with all this energy. Well, some of us aren't. And actually, you get to day one of your period, and you're like, no, I feel like other people feel a few days before. And actually having your period can really, really drain you. Um, well, what I would say is, if you do track, Anna, um, your periods and you know what's coming, then you can tailor, because you really get used to it. Being in tune with your body is so important. You, you can tailor your training around that time. And actually, sometimes even just going from, I would definitely say be active, even when you don't feel like it, just get out. But even just going for a walk, just breathing in the fresh air, looking up at the sky can really lift your mood. And it just makes a huge difference. And then you never know, you might feel like doing that training session when you get back. Cool. Any other comments on PMT here before we move on to the actual time of the month? Auntie Flo, she's paying her visit. Go on, Adele. I would just say, um, just to touch on what I said earlier about actually physically needing two to 300 more calories um, around that time, just for those couple of days. Again, that knowledge could stop you from overeating at that time. And as Fran said, those two to 300 calories, they need to come from carbohydrates. And you need to put that in some perspective because that's like three apples. But so, yeah, somebody put up here, not the 5,000 calories made up of ice cream. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, you do have to be kind to yourself and accept that actually your body genuinely needs those extra calories and it needs it from carbs. And so that's, you know, you can program that in as well. Charlene? I mean, I didn't actually know that. And it explains a lot <laughs> why one week in the month I just eat pasta every night. Um, <laughs> you, you have it one night and you're like, oh, I've not had pasta this month. I'll have it tonight. And then the next day you're like, oh, I could, I could, have, a, could have a bowl of pasta tonight, actually. Yeah. And then you get to the third night and you're like, pasta is this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so that does explain a lot to me. Thanks, Adele. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of answers here. And we've got um, Anita who says that she's never given it a moment's thought before. So I don't know what she's referring to there, whether it's just periods and cycling in general, because there are some people, aren't there, some people out there who just don't seem to get affected at all. And each month rolls into the next, but pretty much the same. So very lucky people there. So we're talking about that time of the month now when we're actually bleeding and um i'd like to talk about some products and cycling as well because obviously a lot of your weight on your bike is taken by your saddle which is precisely where you're bleeding so what what are some of the best products that you guys prefer to use for cycling when you're on your period i guess so fran yeah well, I guess the key thing here is everybody's different, aren't they, as to what products that they use in general on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and this was actually a question that came up on our Bella Vixen chat page um, yesterday evening when I gave people a heads up that this was happening, was a woman asked, what can I, what can my 13-year-old daughter use that doesn't want to use tampons or anything that you have to, you know, it put internally? Um, and I just remember as a kid when I was growing up, I just used to use a sanitary towel and just stick it to the chamois like you would your knickers um it would people seem to think that i would feel it or i would notice it but you've got a chamois pad on anyway which is a little bit thicker you just can't notice it and the other bonus about that is if if it does leak or you do you know you aren't close to the toilet you've got a chamois pad there which is just going to soak it up and you know people worry about things and worry will somebody be able to see it just doesn't happen so you know, I can see there's comments about moon cups. It's not something I've ever used. Somebody else may be able to talk about that in a minute. Maybe Adele, as she's nodding. But I think it depends on what people use. So for me, when I was younger, it was always a simple answer of a sanitary towel um, stuck to chamois. Cool. Yeah, and like you say, the chamois, it's, you've already got the built-in pad straight in, straight there. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Adele, you said you wanted to some, mention one something there. Yeah, I think... Um... It's, it, it's come much more aware of these moon cups and these different types of sort of 
internal things you can use to help with that and they're they're so good unless you are could you just explain what they are um yeah they're like a silicon cup literally like a circle and um there's lots of different types out there some of them are are quite sort of solid and some of them are more flexible but you basically insert it like a tampon and um but they can stay in for much longer and they hold much more blood so you can leave them in uh, I think eight, 12 hours, you can sleep in them overnight, you're swimming in them, there's no leak and they just hold it. And then when you take them out, which is not particularly pleasant, um, you sort of empty them out, rinse them and use them again. So environmentally are brilliant. You don't have any of the potential um, health issues that you can have with tampons. Um, and they are they are actually really worth a try. I think if you can get past the whole taking out, emptying your blood out situation. Yeah, and that you know that is a bit of a situation, especially if you might be on a long bike ride. You might be in a group of people. Perhaps there's more men than there are women in that group, as is commonly the case within cycling. And then changing, you well, you know, the guys will just be stopped by a bush and be like, "I'm just going to take a little wee stop." <laughs> um whereas you might need to explain actually i need to there's more going on here than just going for a wee and um i have some extra products so does anyone like pack an extra bag of things in their pockets when they're going for a ride during their bleeding time and what would you have in that bag no fran so you you've just got your sanitary towel you know that it's safe yeah you're good to go yeah charlene i mean um i've always just um, when I've been cycling, used tampons, but I think I'm going to give Moon Cup a, a go now after hearing that. So especially with the environmentally friendly um, aspects of it, that sounds amazing. But I, so in my period, if I would go through, say, a tampon every two hours for like half a day or a day or something, I would just make sure I don't go out on my bike then. I would just say, no, I'm I'm not out you know um because if that's happening then in my head i'm like my body is thinking about that i'm trying to push it to its max so i'm just gonna <laughs> i'm just gonna chill out for these few hours and then go in the afternoon or go the next day and for me uh, personally that only happens for during my period maybe like half a day or a day max um so it, i would maybe just shuffle one day around if i needed to but because I track, I would always know when that kind of was so I could factor it into my training. Um, but yeah, um, you could just take a tampon or um, change just in your back pocket just so that you've got something in case. Yeah, and always make sure you take your waste with you. You know, I'm talking here if you're changing in the countryside as opposed to actually being able to get to a toilet take everything with you. I've got a brilliant comment from Hannah here saying she's got a little purse of stuff that says, be right back. I'm bleeding. Never gets any questions. <laughs> That's a good idea. That is amazing. Um, yeah, Adele. Yeah, just quickly to touch on Charlene's point there. There are a lot of people who bleed really, really heavy. And um, I don't know how true this is. I, I'm incredibly fortunate. I have like one day periods where you wouldn't even notice. And so the moon cut for me is perfect. Pop it in. You know, next day, take it out, never use it again. And But for people who are really heavy bleeders, apparently they can really help with the um, the stomach cramps as well. Uh, and I think often that's linked to anxiety. If you, you know, if you're using a super, super plus tampon, you have to change it every hour. It does increase your anxiety around that whole time. If you can use a cup or... Um, and there are lots of different brands, so have a little look out there, just uh, menstrual cup. Um, you know you, you know that that can stay in for like five, six hours, even with really heavy bleeding. It's not going to leak. You're going to feel so much more confident, and I think less anxiety is probably going to help with how you're feeling inside as well. And you've seamlessly moved us on to stomach cramps there, which is what I wanted to talk about <laughs> next. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's face it, when you've got stomach cramps, one of the last things you want to feel like doing is getting out on your bike and going to do exercise. Um, some people suffer a lot more than others, but it's generally accepted that some exercise can make you feel better. So who's going to open up on this topic here? Fran, go for it. Well, I'm lucky in that I've never had horrendous stomach cramps, 
but when you actually realize what it is um and the fact that the stomach cramps is are your uterus lining coming away that's what the cramp is basically is it's preparing your womb um because it wants you to have babies it's a simple way of saying it you know it's not surprising that people get stomach cramps you think about how if you scratch a finger how much it hurts then you've got this internal lining coming away um it's not really surprising but the thing i'd read up on and a friend of mine swears by is taking uh so the week before your period take some magnesium and some omega-3 like fatty oil like supplements because that's supposed to help um stomach cramps it's not something i've done but a friend of mine um does and recommends it i've also heard that ginger does as well so it's on the site for uk website and they've done some research with some doctors that said if you're looking for sort of more natural pain relief than ginger um we we know to use ginger for colds and flus but apparently it's it's good for stomach cramps as well according to the medics um and so in terms of stomach cramps and actually cycling do you, do you think that it makes you feel better if you can motivate yourself to get out and push through it personally i think it depends i think if you do a short ride it depends how bad you get them you know some women i know are doubled over and are in bed well clearly if you can't even walk around the house to get ready but i think if they're somewhere in the in the middle range i also think though they might not help your stomach but they will help your mental health because you get that satisfaction of going out, getting some fresh air, and actually feeling you, like you've achieved something. Otherwise, you think, oh, I've just spent all day on the sofa. What a waste of a day. So I just think even if you can get out for half an hour, then it, it, it's worth an effort. But I appreciate for some people that's a massive effort to, to try and do. Yeah, excellent. And um, just going back to the moon cut, because we're getting quite a lot of comments from people very interested in it who haven't really heard of it before. We've just popped it in the comments um, if you want to find a link. So, um, yeah, just go into the comments and you can find out a little bit more about it. Really glad that we brought up this topic. Um, and do you guys, I mean, it's a female it's a female discussion this right now but as we mentioned cycling is a very male dominated sport how do you find that if you go on a ride with the guys in your own personal groups of people that you will ride with is bringing up your period something that you feel that you can do and that you do do and you're able to talk about it with the men in your cycling circles i'd like to speak to each of you individually about that so adele what about you is it a taboo um, topic or I, do you know i think again that's personal isn't it like, i'm really open i am too open too much info you know and um and i don't have a huge filter and there'll be some people yeah, going, mm -hmm, no you don't <laughs> <laughs> and, um, i think that you know but i think boys are way more open to this now than they ever used to be um i think that you know, the youngsters coming through, I've got a son and, um, you know, he knew more about it than my daughter did. And he's a year younger. And I remember him turning to my daughter once and being like, this is going to happen to you. Why didn't you know about this? And I thought, yes. <laughs> yes. But I do, I think it's more, I think it's more acceptable now. But um, my personality trait probably wouldn't notice if it was, <laughs> if they were both. <laughs> uh, what about you, Charlene? And especially, and actually, and talking about it from what your uh, professional career as well, periods, cycling, men in the cycling world, was this a topic that was broached and people were comfortable to talk about across both genders? Um, so I was at the start of about, what, maybe 13 years ago, 14 years ago when it started, it wasn't really talked about, um, but maybe five four or five years into my cycling career uh, actually the coaches started um tracking the period with me so they would have a section on my training that would say what like what day your period you were on how are you how you're feeling flow blah, blah blah just i guess to give them a little bit more information and myself and you know if for example I had really just not great numbers and we were having a phone call for like maybe a few days and he would say, well, you know, you're, you're on your period or you're coming up for your period or you've had your, you know, he would then bring that up, which was quite nice. And, um, I think it's important as coaches as well to, for, um, for people that have periods is to, to, 
integrate that into the training to to know when it is to just be more aware but and everyone's different i mean i've got some friends that are like i can't even feel it when i'm on my period <laughs> i feel fine all the time and then i've got other friends that are like i am they're physically sick they're like i i've been sick this morning because i feel so awful um so and i'm just kind of somewhere in between uh, i can i can usually get get through a day um of every like when i've got a heavy period i can usually go training but if if i'm on the version i've got a, a heavy day then i don't but um yeah i think that if i was going out with a bunch like a bunch ride um you know local bunch and um so old boys there i mean i don't really care i would just say oh i'm on my period okay leave me alone <laughs> you're not talking to me right now just like your mood my mood like like you know when you know sometimes the cycling banner when you're on your period you're coming up to your period you can't just you just can't hack it i couldn't hack it i'd be like no not today like and then they'd be like, oh, it's not funny today tomorrow it might be funny but today not no today. <laughs> yeah we've got, Maybe. <laughs> we've got a mix of people that have got very different opinions about being able to talk mm -hmm. with different people jennifer has said that she's normalized talking period talk with her male cycling buddy and he's less weird about it now and i think that does happen and again like the point of this discussion a little bit talking about it publicly live amongst each other and on Facebook is really useful because Julie says, no way I could discuss it with the men. Just feel like it's a bit too personal and I'm not keen on discussing it with my partner. Um, Frank, is this, would you say in your group, this is a sort of a common feeling that people feel like they don't want to be discussing periods with a male dominated cycling group? Uh, I don't think it's discussed as in, you know, like girls chat about it, you know, we'll say, oh, I'm on my period, oh, I feel rough, I'm bloated, and this, that, and the other. I think I don't have a problem if I'm having a bad day saying I'm having a bad day because I've got my period and oh, it's pre-period time and therefore my hormones are whack. Uh, I, I just wouldn't discuss it with blokes just because I probably, if I feel rough, I just want to keep it to myself, not because I'm, I'm a prude or I don't want to talk about it. Um but with my female friends, I'll quite happily discuss it. Because what we've got to remember about the blokes is they've all got a mother. Most have probably got, you know, sisters or they've got daughters. So they should know a bit about it because it will help them in their life. Exactly as Charlene said, somebody tries to do something, you're like, not today. <laughs> and I understand that, you know, you're not being a pain in the butt. It's just like, don't come near me. No bants today. Uh, you know, just bring me a cup of tea, bring me a chocolate bar and leave. <laughs> Um, so I think it's just that balance, isn't it? Finding the balance that works with the friends, your friendship group. That you're comfortable with, yeah. And I think uh, when it gets really important is kind of when we touched on earlier on when it comes to training and when you're wanting to bring things to that next level, that's when you maybe are maybe forced to have to discuss it more with men and within wider circles of people in more detail. Charlene, did you have something you wanted to add there? Yeah, and it, it's it's annoying sometimes when when you do say you're on your period and then a guy goes, nothing worse than that. Like I, I know some people that do that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm on my period. And they're like, Ah, too much info, I don't need to know that. I'm like, you do need to know that. <laughs> you don't understand, you need to know that. You don't need to think about what it means. You just need to understand emotionally and you know what what how it affects us um and why we might be acting a certain way so if there's any guys out there watching and you say oh like <laughs> with the girl with the period stop yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we just need like a grow up message on our hands that we can just do that <laughs> imagine um, you had to wear like a red just just wear you just have to wear red when you're in your period and then people would know this is the red day for everyone you only wear red when you're in your period and then like people would just know just just stay away just or just ask them if they're okay no don't even ask them if they're okay just leave them alone. So yeah. that just reminds me of like this cycling kit that went round virally once. I don't know, it was like the Polish national team or something, where they had like a skin coloured kit and then a red yeah. crotch panel. Do you remember that? Yeah. A red crotch panel. Um, 
<laughs> that's what that maybe that's the cycling kit that all women should have on their periods. <laughs> This oh, is not yeah. genuine advice, by the way, for anyone tuning in right now. <laughs> We've gone off on a tangent. <laughs> we don't sell that kit, so you can't come and purchase it from us. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. So, yeah, go on, Adele. So it just really reminded me of what Shani was saying there about uh, like a red day. And um, one of the topics that often comes up with my normal cycling group is red day and green day, but not from a perspective of red day being blood week but red day being like we can't have sex because i think that's the opposite side to it isn't it and a lot of people track their periods for those reasons and if you're trying to get pregnant or trying not to get pregnant then equally you've got that red day and that's quite an open topic and that seems to be more accepted than than bleeding it's okay to talk about when you can and can't get pregnant but it's not so okay to talk about being on your periods Mm -hmm. that. It's usually quite an entertaining topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've been plenty entertained already so far. <laughs> been here just over half an hour. <laughs> um, so training-wise, we've touched on it a little bit already, but we've got some great experts here who I'm sure could give some brilliant advice about training periods, cycles. Boom! Another pun. I stole that one from someone in the comments. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, Charlene, would you like to just develop a little bit more on some of the comments you said earlier about training and how to incorporate your periods into your training plans? Yeah, um, I mean, it's hard as well because you would try to say you have everyone has cycle lengths are different so you can have like a 21 day to 38 day cycle I, I don't know and that's kind of average roundabout in between there sometimes you can have a 24 some days you can have a 34 and then um, people think that's irregular but actually i think it's it's pretty normal speaking to most people um, that are not irregular but people that, you know, I do have one or two friends that are like, I'm bang on every month. And I'm like, oh, that's good for you. <laughs> I just know. I just, I'm like, yeah, okay. We're, so everyone has like different um, cycle lengths. So it is difficult to say you wanted to do three weeks building hard and then one week easy. But you can kind of gauge when it's going to be roughly. So I would definitely the, the week that you're feeling the most, the, the most, the most lethargic. I would definitely make that uh, your easier week, just to, to allow you to recover a little bit more. Definitely. Yeah. Is that something that you would agree with, Adele, or is there anything that you'd want to build on on that? Yeah um two things actually but you may be bringing one of them up later but yeah a hundred percent um you need to make sure that the intensity is much lower on those just a few days usually not not necessarily a whole week but again it's you need to know when it is for you and it, and it could be that you need the less intensity during a period like Charlene so once she's come on that's probably when she actually needs to be less intense so intensity can be either you know the actual physical effort you're putting in or just a shorter ride and that's that's really key I think when you're trying to force yourself um to do a really high intense session when you're really feeling like that um it can just impact the future so being kind to yourself each month will allow you to feel better each month about the fact that it's coming so if you force yourself to do the super, super hard session that you've got in from your male coach, who has no idea that you might be on your period, you know, the next time it's coming around, you'll dread it that little bit more. Yeah, I just... Yeah, true. Um, so there's a couple of the comments from, from the audience. Go, okay, What you said, Charlene, how you've got some friends who are like bang on every month. Sophie says she has a friend who used to say, my period is 12 hours late. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. 
god imagine having that sense of timing wow and um this is quite an important one just about that we heard from kerry who wants to talk about um excessive heavy bleeding and what alternatives there are to control the cycle yeah that's the person who i stole the pun from um she's been a terrible bleeder and ended up anemic whilst riding coast to coast which was awful she went to the gp to get some help and she got back there are some medicines to slow the flow um, and contraceptives and even day surgery, which is what she opted for. If the bleeding is regularly stopping you from exercise, then it needs to be checked. So some great advice there. Uh, thank you for that, Kerry. And Adele, you wanted to talk about, you said that you had some um, experience talking about PCOS. So why don't you tell everyone what that is and just take it away from there? Uh, okay, so PCOS is, um, it's actually, it affects one in eight women worldwide, so that's huge, and it's kind of relatively unknown as to why the reasons are, but it presents itself differently in lot in, in everybody, again, um, and so diagnosing it can be really tricky, but something I just want to touch on that Charlene said, and this is really interesting actually, as you said, that it's quite normal to have an irregular period, um, but actually outside of either 21 days or 35 days. So if your period is either 21 days or 35 days, there is a strong chance that you actually have PCOS. Um, and the way it kind of presents itself. Um, so if you have a regular period, and by a regular period, I don't mean that every month is different. I mean that it's either very a long cycle or a very short cycle. And it can come with it being um, irregular as well. So it's not at the same time each month. Um, in extreme cases, people will maybe have more hair than is normal. So especially in male regions like facial hair or chest hair, but quite often it just comes up as like an irregular period, potential to gain weight, because unfortunately with PCOS, you need much less calories, unfortunately, than a normal woman. Um, but the main test for it is that it's a higher, you have higher testosterone. So it goes to if one of two ways. If you've gone down the athlete route, the chances are that you, if, you, if you're a high achieving female athlete, there is a strong chance that you're, you've got PCOS because you've got higher testosterone levels. So you build muscle easier, um, basically, but slightly more like a man, if that makes sense. Um, I have PCOS. <laughs> I'm very muscular. I'm very strong. And then if you've not gone down the fitness route, you can find that you are easily into type 2 diabetic. You put on weight. You're really struggling to lose body fat, and you just it doesn't really make sense. And it's really, really worth everybody just having a little look uh, and having some research into what PCOS is and having you think about whether that could be affecting you. So um, I think that it, the main, the two main things that come out of it is that you have higher testosterone levels and that you tend to be insulin resistant and therefore you will carry more body fat. Um, and if you've gone down the very athletic route, that's kind of good for you. But it also does usually mean that Exactly what Charlene was saying earlier. Sorry, Charlene, I've like pre-diagnosed you. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just going to take it away. <laughs> um, where you say that you're not necessarily lethargic up to your period, but, but during your period you really, really struggle and you don't pick up straight away in day one, that is a real sign of PCOS as well. And people think that it's just polycystic ovaries, uh, sorry, which is what the word means. But more often than not, it doesn't even present itself with polycystic ovaries at all. So it's quite difficult to diagnose. But like I say, one in eight women suffer from it. And so it really is something that people should be doing some research into. And again, I guess it comes back to your point of knowing your body and being able Absolutely. to take care of your own body. Um, and if you do cycling at a really, really high level, high intensity, it happens a lot in um, when people do a lot, a lot, a lot of sport. It can actually stop your period sometimes as well. What's that all about? I've come across it in a couple of my friends who have been like really high end athletes. 
And is, I mean, is it healthy? Is it okay? It's, it's not okay. No, it's not okay. And it doesn't tend to come necessarily from the over exercising. It tends to come from the lack of nutrition around the exercise. So very, very lean females will <clears throat> basically lose their period, which I think for the youngsters seems like a great thing to happen, but it just isn't. It can really, it can actually make you infertile and then never, ever be able to pick that back up. So it's not, it's definitely not a good thing and you need to get that checked really soon, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's what I sort of came across with people like, oh, it's great. I'm cycling all the time and I never get a period. It's perfect. But ultimately, women's bodies are designed in certain ages to be having periods. Anyone else got anything they want to add on that, Fran? Well, I get the name they give to that is the REDS, the relative energy deficiency. So if you hear people talking about REDS, that is what... Um, they're referring to but very much like Adele says it, it's not a good thing our body does it for a reason it's not something um, that we particularly want to stop or get rid of and I think it's engaging and educating the young girls that obviously you said think it's a great thing and realizing that actually they can use their period to their benefit so they could be still doing high level sport and as long as they you know look at all the different um ways of dealing with their period that we've discussed like moon cups tampons all the variety of things they can use it to their benefit and discover that you know there's lots of famous people out there that accredit their gold medal winning performances in a pool or whatever to have in their period it's amazing so we want to keep having our periods even though they're bloody annoying <laughs> thank you um Charlene, did you want to say anything about that? I just saw you nodding along, or were you just just into the conversation? Like interesting, yes. <laughs> cool. <laughs> like that. Um, cool. Well, I think that's pretty much it from the conversation. Unless there's anything else anybody else wants to add to this topic, uh, any more questions come in from the audience as well. As you should be able to tell by now, there's not anything that we're not prepared to talk about. So those questions can come in and uh, we're happy to answer them. So I'll just leave that there for a couple of seconds. Yeah, Fran, if you want to go no. ahead. There is, I, there's a book I want to recommend. Um, I, I'm sure Adele's heard of it. There's a book called Raw by Dr. Stacey Sims. That's got a lot of very good information in it about all of these things. You know, her, her mantra is women are not small men. So it's all about, you know, periods. It talks about um, the menopause, which is obviously something we, I need to see, start thinking about in the next 10 years, but I'm burying my head in the sun about that bit at the minute. Uh, <laughs> all of these kind of things, it talks about how to fuel yourself during your cycle. It even gives you ideas of, um, you know, various fitness sessions you can use, not stepping on anyone's toes here, just go to Charlene or Adele instead. But it's just <laughs> the first source of information for people to educate themselves a little bit more before they go down, you know, the route of, of speaking to, to people more personally. Cool. Yeah, Adele? Um, yeah, do you know, I'm just going to touch on that point as well, because I'm sure we've got a huge age range listening in today. When you're younger, all of these things, they don't quite matter so much. And then as you get older, um, it's not that they matter more to you, but they have more of an impact on your life. So, for example, PCOS, when you're younger, you can kind of manage it okay, and you, you know, you're very active. But as you get older, you can suddenly realise that the things you thought were normal are actually making things life harder for you. So you are putting on weight and you can't understand how you can lose it. Your periods are starting to bother you more and more. Maybe they're getting heavier. And I think that it is, as, as you get older, maybe you're more aware, but just as your body matures, these things actually cause more of a problem for you. And so it is really important that you do some research into it. And, and that book, Raw, is actually super. It's really good. Cool. We've brought up some great resources here from apps to books as well. So we'll try and get them all in the comments. So if you've been watching and you want to uh, find out where these resources are, we'll get them in the comments just after we sign out of here. So um, we're all going to stay on the screen. But if you could all pick out a comment that's either a question that you feel like you could give a good answer to or just a comment that you've seen and you've enjoyed. Um, one by one, if you could have a minute to scroll through before we say goodbye at the end of this session. Um, so, hands up who would like to go first with their comment that they've picked out. 
they're just scrolling through. And thanks, everyone, by the way, for all your comments today. It's, it really definitely does add something. It makes me feel like we're not just talking to ourselves. Charlene, go ahead. Uh, so, Liz, uh, defo going to try Moon Cup type thing. Lockdown is a great time to give this a go. I am going to do exactly the same as Liz because I really want to see if this helps. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to give that a go. So, yeah, thanks for the recommendations, everyone. <laughs> and lockdown is a great time for trying all new things cycling. It's been it's been explosive. It's been amazing. Fran, all right, you, off, over to you. Um, I've got two yeah. One from Julianne Pope, who says, cycling can distract you from the pain of cramps. That kind of goes hand in hand with what I said earlier about just get out that door. Even 10 minutes is better than nothing, and it might help you. And then the other quick one was Di Jagger, who says, don't even get me started on the menopause. Oh, Di, well, when I need some advice, I'll come your way. Well, on that note, we will be getting started on the menopause. This series is extending because it's been so popular and we've got so many topics to cover and we are going to be doing a special session on cycling and the menopause. Diane, you're great at talking, so maybe I'll even uh, ask to see whether you could be a panellist. And uh, you can also check out the Cycling UK website for information about cycling and the menopause as well. OK, Adele, have you seen a comment that you that's particularly caught your attention? Yeah, do you know, I was actually just going to pick up on um, on Diane's comment there about the menopause and say, like, just what I said, like, you know, as we get older, things just start to become more, like, they affect us more, you know, and um, we don't really want that. We want to be able to handle it and deal with it, like, with strong, strong girlies and, you know, we do take quite a lot of crap, don't we, to be fair. We have to put up with a lot. Um, so, yeah, so as Fran nicked that, I'm just going to... Um, Shout out to the clients who have been listening. <laughs> and saying, like, how amazing. Like, Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. No, Adele, it's been brilliant having you. Uh, I really enjoyed that. Team. So thank you so much. Um, and I hope that everybody's enjoyed listening to it today. Huge thanks to the guests. Next week, we're going to be discussing cycling and maintaining a cycling lifestyle. So maybe you've just got into it during lockdown and you want to know how to progress that little bit further. So until then, we'll see you next week and we'll get back to you in the comments. And oh, one more thing, we've got a link to all of our guests today. So if you want to find out more about them, Fran from Velo Vixen Selling Beautiful Women's Kit, Adele from Shaka Lifestyle, uh, helping you with all lifestyle things. <laughs> Is that my word? <laughs> well, my That's good. Lifestyle is lifestyle. And uh, Charlene with your fitness. So go and check out the links in the comments. Thank you, everybody. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.